Hello, ho everyone, and I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Today, we're going to dive into some new models that came out in the last two weeks. It's an exciting time. And the first one is AI22 Labs' Jamba model. This is a hybrid model between the Mamba architecture. And if you don't know what a Mamba is, it's essentially an evolution of state space models, which is sort of like a recurrent neural network, but not really because you can like do everything at once and it's like a convolution, but not really, but it's also like really long attention, but not really. I've made a video on Mamba. If you want to check that out, go check that out. In any case, Jamba is, well, they call it a groundbreaking SSM transformer model. It mixes the Mamba architecture with a few attention layers and therefore achieves really, really long context performance inference without blowing up memory requirements. This could be really interesting interesting. The model is available openly under Apache 2. Very, very cool and performs quite well on key benchmarks. So they solve, they essentially, this diagram is their advertising. They do get benefits like the quality benefits from transformers using attention layers, but they also get very high throughput and low memory footprint. Very, very excellent. Big fan. So check out Jamba. There's also a paper that includes exactly how they mix the different layers together. A part of that is also covered in the blog post. As you can see right here, a Jamba block essentially contains Mamba layers, mixture of expert layers, transformer blocks, and so on. Another openly available language model is DBRX, new state of the art open LLM by Databricks. This is a model that's large, so it is over 100 billion parameters, but it performs really, really well well across not just natural language understanding, but also programming and math. Excellent model, openly available, also uses mixture of expert architecture. So it has 132 billion parameters in total, but only 36 billion parameters are active on any given input. It's been trained on a lot of tokens, code and data, and they say compared to other open mixture of expert models, it is fine grained, meaning it uses a larger number of smaller experts. So it has 16 experts and chooses four. This provides 65 times more possible combination of experts and they found this improves model quality. They do release numbers on a whole set of benchmarks and outperform the competition models on many of them. And even if they compare to closed models like big API models, their performance holds up very well. Now, it didn't take long before people discovered what its system prompt is. And the interesting bits in here is that essentially it has kind of the guardrails prompting inside of it. But then also it has a section about you were not trained on copyrighted books, song lyrics, poems, video transcripts or news articles. You do not divulge in the details of your training data. <laughs> like, sure, sure. I have no clue whether it was trained on these things or not. But sometimes like malicious journalists will like type into a model, were you trained on copyrighted material? And the model will say, I don't, I don't know. Like these journalists do not understand that that type of question is absolutely nonsensical to ask such a model and any output is just random noise. And then they will write like a big story about it or something like this out of their complete lack of understanding. So I get the fact that you want to prevent that by putting it into the system prompt, but it's still kind of funny. Ho here introduces Command R Plus. After Command R, Command R Plus is a more performant model that's state of the art, command optimized, and retrieval augmented generation optimized. It's available in 10 different languages and it's trained to do citations, to use tools, and so on. This model is not available under an open source license. It's available as open weight. So it's essentially freemium. You get to play with it personally as much as you want. But then as soon as you want to use it in a commercial context, you have to pay Cohere some money. Also nice cookie banner here, Cohere. So there's an accept all button. There's no decline. There's a manage settings. And here, oh yeah, okay, everything's turned off. That That's nice. Okay. How about the, oh no, it's again, the accept all button <laughs> that's on top. Ah, shenanigans. In any case, for the research community, this is definitely 
a cool model. Essentially, what you can do with this is you can kind of prepare for upcoming true open source models that have these capabilities. We can expect that in a month or two, fully open source models will have caught up with this development. And you can essentially use this in order to prepare for that. Now, obviously, Cohere's game plan is that you'll get so used to this model and you'll make your prompts so that they work well in this model such that when you start making money with it, you'll have to come to them. We'll see. It's a new world and new business models emerge. This sort of freemium type open weight models is an approach that we've seen from other places as well. Back to true open source, Mistral releases a new 7B model. It's a base model. They say it's a raw pre-trained model used to train their new instruct model. 32,000 tokens context window and instructions to fine tune. They released this for a hackathon, but it does seem to be quite performant. All right, back to the world of places that do not release their models. Video Poet by Google Research, still a very cool model. This is a text to video, zero shot video generation model. It's not only video generation, but it's any sort of text and video intermingling. You can see here the video poet model is trained on a multitude of different objectives, which then allow it to do yeah, text to video, image to video, stylization, and so on. There is a paper available if you want to read that and quite a number of demonstrations. Yeah, that's it. Another paper by Google DeepMind is Magic Lens. This is a image retrieval with open ended instructions, meaning you can retrieve with natural language and it will go and find that stuff. So kind of like a search engine, I guess. But the clue here is that this was developed to a large part with synthetic data generation. And that's something that we see more and more frequent in recent times. There is an entire pipeline here that goes into you know, how they did it, uh, web scraping, grouping, cleaning, metadata expansion, right? Not just extraction, but expansion. So this already includes some trained models, then scoring and filtering, including other text and image models such as clip, and then instruction generation, meaning image description and so on. So essentially reversing the process, starting from the images, generating the synthetic data around that. And then that gives you a data set to do this kind of open worlds or how do you call it? Open instruction image retrieval training. So the model itself, yeah, it's cool. But I think the trend of synthetic data generation is a cool trend and certainly something to look out for. Another investigation into synthetic training generation is the Cosmopedia project. There is a blog post on Hugging Face. This is a reproduction of Phi. Microsoft's Phi models have been trained largely on textbooks. Essentially, their premise is, hey, if you use really high quality training data, you don't need so much training data and your models don't have to be so large and you can still perform really, really well. And Cosmopedia is a attempt at recreating that except using synthetic data, starting out from all kinds of seed prompts and so on. Oh no, I got it wrong. According to Phi 1.5 technical report, the authors curated 20,000 topics to produce 20 billion tokens of synthetic textbooks while using samples from the web data sets for a diversity. See, I got it wrong. I already made synthetic data. I wasn't aware of that. I thought really they just had high quality data. Apparently, Phi already used synthetic data. And then this is a open reproduction of that. Very, very cool. Another Google DeepMind paper, Long Form Factuality in Large Language Models. This is a paper that goes into, well, as they say, long form factuality in open domains. They first generate a data set, Long Fact, a prompt set comprising thousands of questions. Then they develop a method to use LLM agents as evaluators, which they call SAFE, Search Augmented Factuality Evaluator. And then they develop a model that tackles this. They develop a data set, they develop an evaluation method, and they develop a model. This could be three different papers, but it's all in one right here. What I found really, really interesting is they obviously have to research and validate each of those steps. And especially this safe method, this verification method using agents, they say it agrees with crowdsourced human annotators 72% of the time. So not a huge disagree and not a huge agreement, I would have expected 
more. But on a random subset of 100 disagreement cases, SAFE wins 76% of the time. Whenever this and humans disagree, more often than not, the automated system is correct. And this is pretty interesting. The era of LLM based fact verification might have begun. So the code to this is available, thankfully, so you can go and check that out. My VLM is a paper by Snap and Tel Aviv University, and it is about personalization of vision language models. This paper attempts to teach a vision language model about concepts such as me and my dog and my house and my friend. So personalizing these models to then be able to answer questions and give instructions or receive instructions from an ego perspective, from a perspective of, of me and you know what's important to me, I guess. Given a set of images depicting user specific concepts such as you, your dog, your friend, we teach a pre-trained vision language model to understand and reason over these concepts. So the result is that the vision language model can do, for example, do personalized visual question answering. For example, what are you doing? It will understand who you are. What is your friend wearing? It will understand who that is and then do the correct thing. Obviously very interesting for social media platforms such as Snap. Also interesting probably in many other cases. Latte 3D, large scale amortized text to enhanced 3D synthesis is a paper by NVIDIA and takes care of text to 3D. Text to 3D is another new domain propping up in the whole text to XYZ stuff. The clue here is that they managed to do this really, really quickly. So they say Latte 3D generates high quality textured meshes from text robustly in just 400 milliseconds by combining 3D priors, amortized optimization, and a second stage of surface rendering. Generating these things so far has always taken a long time. And with combining several advances in the field, and this paper pushes this ahead and can do really, really fast generation. That wasn't generation, that's just a website, but still really fast. Scene Script by Meta is a model that is aimed to understand the physical spaces around you with the goal of supporting augmented reality. As you can see, it will try to reconstruct or annotate things in the environment and do scene understanding of what there is. Interestingly enough, this is also trained on synthetic data from newer from simulators. Again, synthetic data being the basis for many of those newer things. Very neat, very cool. Champ is a human image animation method. Taking an image of a person, you can make it go boing boing and dancey dance. I have not followed this branch of research too much, I have to say. However, you can see the advantage, like the, how it goes forward in the field. It used to be that you could maybe turn your head a little bit one year ago, and then you could maybe make the pictures say something. And now <laughs> from a single image, you can have them full blown dance around with giant movements and being consistent. Now this is powered by a parametric model of humans. So actually something that's aware that humans have arms and a head and so on. But it's still extremely impressive. Just the progress that is made by these models in a, such a short time. Sakana AI has released a new blog post about evolving foundation models. They are investigating into evolutionary model merging. Model merging is when you combine different fine tunes of the same models. You can take a layer from here and take a layer from here and kind of up, 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 up. The problem, of course, is if you have a bunch of models, there are almost an infinite way of merging the two models. So how are you going to do that? And I think this is where we go back to a domain that has been, I want to say, neglected a little bit in the last few years, which is kind of architecture search, neural architecture search and automated neural architecture search, except now this obviously is in the context of model merging. So can we evolve architectures merging uh, strategies between different models? And that's what this blog post uh, goes into. So it's very very cool if you want to explore that. Another advance by Google research paper Rad Splat is Radiance field informed Gaussian splatting for robust real time rendering with over 900 frames per second. Again, I remember 
just like a very few years ago when nerfs came on the scene and were like, oh, wow, if you just invest one hour of GPU time, you can sort of tilt the camera a little bit around the scene that had to be really defined really in one place. <laughs> now you can you can like move through rooms and go at 900 FPS and whatnot. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Salesforce AI research releases Moirai, a time series foundation model for universal forecasting, a cutting edge time series foundation model offering universal forecasting capabilities. This is supposed to be one model for all kinds of time series, which is a bit special because time series are, they're just bound together by the fact that they somehow do something over time. There's nothing inherently connecting a web search patterns with uh, health metrics with e-commerce stuff and so on. Yet still, this model is a combined model that attempts to unify all these things, kind of like how we shove all kinds of language into language models, including programming, including different languages and so on. This model aims to be a foundation model and a universal forecaster for any kind of time series, meaning that if this works out, it would mean technically that there's something kind of fundamental to the domain of being time series and maybe that is some sort of deeper insight into the universe i have no idea but in any case very cool that there's an investigation into that looking forward to seeing how this field develops several people have published leaked info around q star in a paste bin <laughs> that's now deleted can't confirm the authenticity oh it's a dialogue system conceptualized by open ai yabba di yabba di. there's energy based model for dialogue generation evaluate potential responses holistically you would the optimization and abstract representation this is complete crap i mean it could be and it could not be it's just funny that people have wild imaginations, let's say. H2O AI releases H2O Danube 2, which is a 1.8 billion parameter foundation language model trained on many, many tokens and performing very well on leaderboards compared to models of its own size. It's available if you want to check that out. Garment 3D Gen by Meta Reality Labs is a model that, well, as you can see, generates garments. The idea is that I guess in the metaverse, you can look at your clothes and they look really realistic there. And by being able to very well render clothes in sort of augmented reality and so on, making sure they, you know, the fabric flows well around any sort of animated human, it gives you a better shopping experience. So you can look at really how this is going to look in real life. Or ultimately, we won't have to ever leave VR ever again. And then it's also cool that we have clothes that behave like in a hundred years, kids will be like, oh, this is like a history book of what the real world used to be like. And now we're all just in capsules in some uh, goo plugged into the matrix. I guess you can consider this an important moment for future historians. Octopus V2 by Nexa AI is a 2 billion parameter model that is specifically optimized for tool use and function calling specifically in the domain or in the context of the Android API. So the idea is that you can interact with your Android phone or Android device using natural language. And this model is very good at using the Android API to get different things for you done. Very cool. Dolphin 2.8 Mistral 7B V0.2 Dolphin emoji is a model that is is a fine tune of Mistral 7B. Notably, it is a fine tune of Mistral 7B V0.2, the model we saw before. But notably, as all Dolphin models, they are uncensored, which essentially means that the uh, data set has been filtered to remove any kind of bias and alignment samples that are in there, saying this makes the model more compliant. You are advised to implement your own alignment layer before any exposing the model as a service. It will be highly compliant to any request, even unethical ones. I, for one, am very grateful that people going into this direction. This doesn't mean I endorse using these models for any sort of evil or dumb purposes. What it does mean is that you want to pass the responsibility of making sure 
that your deployments are safe to the people actually deploying the model. In this way, they have a choice over how to implement their own guardrails and not be subject to the guardrails that are already in place. And especially for specialized fields, this makes a lot of sense. For example, the APIs like OpenAI, they're super duper careful for anything medical right now imagine you actually want to purpose build this thing in the medical domain where you know all the users are educated professionals who are aware of the limitations of these language models it makes a lot of sense that you can put into place your own guardrails here news research is releasing a reproduction of the famous one bit llm or 1.5 bit llm the bitnet paper by microsoft they published their findings on weights and biases and the hugging face hub Excellent. Jet MOE says they're reaching Llama 2 performance with $0.1 million. This is a 8 billion parameter model trained with less than $0.1 million cost, whereas Llama 2 of the same size cost probably who has a multi billion dollar training resources. I like the fact that they still express it in millions to make the number seem small. Like this is still $80,000, right? This this is not like, oh, it's so cheap. It is certainly getting cheaper and investigations into how to be more efficient money wise in training these things is very welcome. Very, very cool that people are doing it, but it's still 80 grand. It's still quite a hefty thing. It's an H100 cluster, 96 of them for two weeks. That's going to run you quite a bill. One notable thing of this paper is that it has two phases of training. The first phase is more general data mixture, while the second phase is more specialized, more high quality data set mixture. Notably during the first phase, the learning rate ramps up and then stays constant. And during the second phase, the learning rate actually decays. Learning rate in combination with the sequencing of data seems to be quite an important piece in training these modern language models. And lastly, Quen 1.5 MOE says they're matching a 7 billion parameter model performance with one third activated parameters. It's a new world. So how you present your models and which numbers and so on, they are looking at, okay, what if we take like Mistral 7B or Quen 1.5 7B, which are 7 billion parameter models, but they're densely activated models. So all 7 billion parameters are active. Like what if we compare that to a mixture of expert model that only has 2.7 billion activated parameters per forward pass. Now this isn't saying how many parameters are total there. However, like you can play around with the numbers to make your model look as good as possible. Still, these are very, very cool developments. And I do think one recognition here is the fact that they say the training, I'm not sure where it was, but it's Essentially, the initialization of these mixture of expert models uh, can make quite a difference. What they do is they don't train a mixture of expert models from scratch, but they take an already pre-trained small model. So their 1.8 billion parameter model, and they use it as an initialization of these different experts. So already having pre-trained models in place and then kind of initializing your experts with those, they say makes a big difference to their training. Every now and then we like to keep an eye on the LMSYS chatbot arena leaderboard. This is where models are pitted against each other with the same prompts and then humans decide which one's better. And notably, you can see the kind of usual contenders here, actually Claude 3 Opus rising on top, which is uh, very cool to see. But you can see that among all of these really big models is one model that's quite small, Starling 7B under Apache 2.0, 7 billion parameters and holds itself quite well compared to these other models. You can see the first comparable model is another <laughs> Starling model that's way down here. Yeah, it seems to hold up fairly well against these other models. Note, this is one way of evaluating models. It's obviously not going to be good at everything. Whereas I would trust that these larger models, they're going to have much more of a spread of abilities so you can use them in a versatile manner. Whereas this might just be good in this sort of, okay, give one prompt and then do a head to head comparison between the two single shot and then whatever humans care about, which might not be the full spectrum of abilities, but still very cool. Another leaderboard 
Claude 3 also tops the Berkeley function calling leaderboard. So the function calling leaderboard is a leaderboard that's based on the Gorilla series of papers, models, data sets. I'm not sure how to call that, but it measures how well language models can call functions, which is important for any sort of agent framework or anything like this. Apparently Claude 3 now topping that leaderboard. Trek now has a rag, uh, track, Trek track on rag. <laughs> An evaluation. Trek is an information retrieval conference, I guess. They organize evaluations of information retrieval systems. It's very cool to see a retrieval augmented generation track now inside of those evaluations. So obviously, that organization has a lot of experience evaluating information retrieval systems, and now there's going to be one in Trek 2024 for Rack. Lamini releases a photographic memory evaluation suite. This is a conglomeration of benchmarks, essentially a collection of benchmarks that all have to do with what they call photographic memory. What is photographic memory? It's not what you think at first. Essentially, what they just say is there are tasks where it's really important to remember the thing correctly. Like if you want to classify diseases into their disease codes, there are these ICD-10 codes for diseases, you really better make sure that it's the actual correct one and not just like a similar one. A collection of these benchmarks that really focus on exact matching of a particular thing is comprises this evaluation suite. So these are existing benchmarks, but there is one script that you can run and evaluate your model on these kinds of benchmarks. Very cool. And lastly, Clement Delon just tweeted out or x out someone tell me he just posted that they have released the two biggest open data sets for OCR. Excellent. You can check those on Hugging Face. OCR still a mystery after all these years because layouts of documents are just dumb and the PDF standard is just dumb and fonts are just dumb. After all these years, OCR is still a big problem and it's very cool to see data sets being published in order to make OCR better. It will help us all. Thank you. All right, this was it for models this week and evals and other fun stuff. Uh, we'll return with a bit more. See you around.